So, with that in mind, let's move on to where are we headed in Mormon theology. Now, so far in your chart, we've covered the left-hand side of your chart. We're now going to cover the right-hand side. And on the right-hand side of your chart, there are three different levels of heaven, or three kingdoms. There are three different kingdoms in the Mormon heaven. And if you look, there's also a path that leads from planet Earth to each one of those kingdoms. And on each one of those paths, there are uh, things that you have to do to be able to attain that level of heaven. And that's what we're going to be referring to as we go through this chart. But before we go there, we need to understand a few things. Number one, the atonement of Christ does not pay for your individual sins. It atoned for Adam's fall in the Garden of Eden. Through Adam's fall, death came into the world. And it is through Christ's atonement and his resurrection that we will be raised from the grave and death will be defeated. So in Mormonism, salvation is universal. It is not dependent upon your faith in Christ. It doesn't matter what you believe. All will be raised from the grave. This is contrary to the gospel of Christ where only those who are in Christ will be saved. It is by grace through faith that you have been saved and not by works. Also, you have to be worthy. You have to keep the 4,800 laws that I mentioned earlier and obey them in order to progress to Godhood. So the first of the three kingdoms is the telestial kingdom. So let's start at planet Earth on your chart and let's follow the path leading to the lowest kingdom, the telestial kingdom. The path to that kingdom is known as the low way. It is for, for those who are dishonest, liars, sorcerers, adulterers, and whoremongers. Those who end up in the celestial kingdom make a pit stop for a thousand years in hell. In Mormonism, hell is temporary. It is not eternal. It's much like the Catholic idea of purgatory. The only ones who suffer an eternal hell are Satan and his minions, his false prophet, and those who are sons and daughters of perdition. You may be asking, what is a son or daughter of perdition? In Mormon theology, a son or daughter of perdition is someone who has had the truth of the Mormon gospel revealed to them and then rejected it. I would qualify as a son of perdition and suffer eternally in the Mormon hell. Everyone else, hell is temporary. Now those who go to hell remain there for a thousand years or during the millennial reign of Christ. When Christ's millennial reign ends, they are set free and get to progress to the celestial kingdom. In the celestial kingdom, they will be like the angels and they will be servants of all those who are in the higher kingdoms. They will be single. They cannot procreate. They cannot progress to Godhood. They will be separated from God and Jesus Christ. And the only member of the Mormon Godhead who can visit them is the Holy Ghost. Well, this brings us now to the second kingdom, the terrestrial kingdom. So let's go back to planet Earth and let's follow the path to the, the terrestrial kingdom. And the path to the terrestrial kingdom is known as the Broadway. The terrestrial kingdom is reserved for those who are good and honorable but blinded by the craftiness of men, who weren't valiant in their testimony for Christ or who died without the law. In the terrestrial kingdom, they will be like the angels and they will be servants of those in the higher kingdoms. They will be single, they cannot procreate, they cannot progress to Godhood, and they are separated from God the Father. The only members of the Mormon Godhead who can visit them is Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Well, this brings us to the highest kingdom, the celestial kingdom. Note that in this kingdom there are three levels within that kingdom. So let's go back to planet Earth and follow the path to the celestial kingdom on your chart. That path is known as the straight and narrow way. It is for those who obey all the basic ordinances and receive their temple endowments. Those who make it to the celestial kingdom get to dwell in the presence of God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. Now, to get to the lowest level of the celestial kingdom, you first have to repent. You have to have faith in Joseph Smith, the Mormon Church, and the Book of Mormon. You have to receive church membership, be baptized, and receive the laying on of hands for the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
In the lowest level, you will eventually progress to godhood, but you can't until you've had your temple marriage ceremony performed. Now, if you didn't get your temple marriage ceremony performed in this life, it can be performed by proxy for you by someone else. And this is why Mormons perform baptisms for the dead and temple endowments and temple marriage ceremonies for the dead in their temples. They're trying to help those who didn't have that done in this life be able to progress to godhood. That leads us to the middle level of the celestial kingdom. The middle level, in order to get there, you have to keep the requirements of the first level. You also have to be moral, loyal to the church leaders, faithful in giving of your tithes and offerings, keeping the word of wisdom, which is their dietary law, and fulfilling the duties of your calling, whatever that might be. You will eventually progress to Godhood, but once again, you can't because you haven't had your marriage sealed in the temple. That leads us to the highest level of the Mormon celestial kingdom. This is the inner circle of God's family. In order to reach the inner circle of God's family, you have to keep the requirements of the first two levels. But if you've had your temple endowment, marriage uh, rituals performed for you, or you have had them performed during your lifetime, you get to enter into that, up, that inner circle. See the banner on your chart that says celestial marriage. That represents where you have to pass through that marriage ritual in the temple in order to progress to the inner circle. Celestial marriage is the term that Mormons use for eternal marriages, marriages that have been sealed for time and all eternity in their temples. Those who attain this level are exalted to godhood. They begin making, populating, and ruling over their own planets just as they believe that God the Father did. So can you begin to see the emphasis on works in Mormonism? It is a works-based theology. And it's this works-based theology that really messed with me when I began going to a Christian church. 